Hi everybody, it's Lynn Applebaum from the Somerset Hills Y. I hope you're doing well. I know it's a little tough right now. We're a little confined in our homes, but that doesn't mean that you have to stop moving completely. So today we're going to do some simple exercises together. You really don't need anything uh, that you don't already have in your home to do this series of exercises. You can use soup cans or bottles for weights if you like, if you don't have small hand weights. And you can use a ball, a small playground ball, or even a bunched up towel. If you get creative, you can really squeeze it up almost like the ball shape. So those are really the only things that you need. And of course, I have a chair behind me because I will be working some exercises standing and some seated. Now, those of you who are very comfortable doing everything standing, that's great. What I would suggest is that you have something nearby that you can just use to steady yourself if you need to. And for those of you who are seated, you're good to go. You have everything you need. So seated or standing, we're going to start with a march just to get our heart rate up, kind of get the muscles warmed up and get ready for the work we're going to do. The higher you can get your knees, the better. When we're moving and we're stepping, we want to be able to lift those legs up as we need them to. So let's do about eight more marches together here. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now I'm going to separate this move and do a few finger flings just to get the water off my fingers. I don't really have water on my fingers, it's imaginary but I just want you to get those fingers moving. If your hands are a little cold, this is a great thing to do after you wake up in the morning. I'm gonna do my finger flings out to the sides, overhead, finally down to the floor. Now I'm gonna add my finger flings to my march. So let's do the march first together and add our finger flings forward. Let's take them out to the sides. Up to the ceiling. And finally down to the floor. Good, keep the march going. As you're marching, we're gonna do some shoulder rolls, opening up the chest, lifting the rib cage, pulling that belly in, and just really turning our focus to our posture. It's really easy to get sloppy when we're sitting at home, isn't it? Slumping over a book, the computer. So let's work really hard to make sure that we're keeping our good posture as tight and as fixed as we can. Standing up nice and tall and relax. So I'm gonna have a seat in my chair. And the next few exercises, you can again do either standing or seated. So we said we were going to focus on posture for a couple more moments. I'm going to take my elbows and tuck them underneath my shoulders and reach both hands forward and then pull those elbows back, squeezing the shoulder blades back and together. Let's do 10 of these together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good, go ahead and relax those hands. And let's just do a few head turns. So I'm gonna to turn to my right, looking past that shoulder, coming back to the center, and turning to the left, and coming back to the center. I'm gonna tilt my chin to my chest, and then look all the way up to the ceiling and come right back to the center. Tilt the left ear, right ear toward the right shoulder. Bring your head back up, and the left ear to the left shoulder, and back up. You should feel nice and rested and ready to go. Well, not rested, actually. Energized and ready to go. Let's rephrase that. So I'm gonna go back to my march, which we did earlier on, and we're gonna add a few complexities to it. So let's just get moving. So I'm gonna take my elbows, I have my elbows tucked underneath my shoulders, and I'm just gonna flip my palms up and down as I march. 
These are called pancake flips. Now we have two activities happening at the same time, which makes it a little bit more challenging. We also have two rhythms going on at the same time. So these are all really great things for you to be practicing, whether it's sitting in a chair march with me and doing this activity, or combining a couple of other things together that really make your brain work. We're gonna do a couple more just like this. I'm gonna give you a chance to regroup. And then we're gonna change it a little bit. Good, take a tiny breather. If you need more downtime, by all means do, you can always stop the video and come back to it when you're ready. Now, we're gonna take that exercise and we're gonna just flip it on its head a little bit. So I'm gonna start my march again. I'm gonna take my hands, have my palms facing up, but here's the change. One palm is going to be down now. I'm gonna do an alternating pancake flip with my chair march. Let's just get those two moves first. How are we doing? Good? All right, take another little breather. Now the next time we do this, we're gonna add a countdown. That is going to make it a little bit more challenging. What makes it particularly challenging is that we have two different rhythms happening at the same time. So I don't want you to overthink it. I want you to kind of just feel it and where, where it should happen and it'll make it a little bit easier for you. I'm gonna start my march. It's always a good idea to get one exercise happening first and then add the other piece in. Now I'm gonna do my flips. Once I feel comfortable with those two pieces, I'm gonna start adding in my countdown. Now our countdown is gonna follow the hand flips. And I'm gonna go from 10 all the way back down to one. Ready? Here we go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Shake it out. If that was challenging for you, don't worry about it. You have plenty of opportunity to practice it. Instead of a countdown, you can do the alphabet. You can do a countdown by two. You can do this any way that you like. The idea is that we're trying to layer the activities so it forces our brain and body to work together. And um, these are really important exercises for you. So I encourage you to try to do them and get creative with them. When you see that you're doing it correctly, that's when it really counts. So try not to accept sloppy because it just really isn't as good as pushing yourself to do it as well as you possibly can. Anyway, let's move on from there. So the next thing we're gonna do together, I'm going to use my small hand weights and I will be standing up for this. And again, for those of you who are seated, you can absolutely do all of this seated. Now I have small weights that I'm going to be using. You can use bottles, you can use your soup cans, you can use nothing at all, up to you. So I'm gonna come from my seat to stand, up nice and tall, and I'm gonna go back to my shoulder rolls. I just weighted them this time. So I just have my hands down to the sides, doing a few shoulder rolls, readjusting my posture. As I'm standing, I'm pulling my stomach in, lifting the rib cage, and trying to make myself as tall and as long as I possibly can. Good. We're gonna work some shoulders today. If you have shoulder issues, I'm gonna give you a couple of alternatives for smaller movements. The first shoulder exercise I'm going to do is an alternating lateral raise. So with my palms facing down, I'm gonna simply raise one side up to shoulder height and lower down. And the other side comes up and lower down. An alternative to this is to do a neutral grip. So I have my palms facing forward. This takes a little pressure off the shoulder. If neither of these works for you with the weights, feel free to put the weights down, do a shorter movement. Any way you're going to do it, let's do 10 together. Alternating sides. One. Two, three, four, breathe, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Beautiful job. Take a moment to just recover. Shoulder roll back. shoulder exercise standing together or again seated if that's where you are. I'm going to bring my arms up to about shoulder height, goal pose position. We're going to lift both arms up together. You can do this with or without weight. Nice and tall. Ten repetitions. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Excellent. I'm going to have a seat again. Put my weights down carefully, making sure that I'm not using my lower back to do that bend. Let's do a little shoulder stretch before we move on. I'm going to take my arms all the way out and give myself a nice big hug, trying to touch my fingers together behind me. Why shouldn't you give yourself a hug? Open up. Switch sides. Try to see if you can touch those fingers together. I can't do it. <laughs> Good. Shake it out. Now the two exercises that I just showed you are just a tiny fraction of what you can do. For those of you who are more interested, there is a lot of good video that the Y is supporting you with which can show you some other weighted exercises that you might want to do at home. Right now we're going to move on to some range of motion exercises and some things that will help you with activities of daily living. One of my favorites is our single leg up and over, which is very useful for helping you get up and out of a car. And um, being able to just lift that leg up and over whenever you need to. I move my weights out of the leg. And roll them out of the leg. Readjusting my posture, sitting up nice and tall. And again, if you're feeling like you would like to have a little bit more of a balance challenge, please feel free to do this one standing. Just have something next to you that you can either hold on to or just have it there if you need it. So let's start with this leg. And imagine that there's a picket fence that we're going to lift that leg up and over. I always like to have a visual for this. I think it's really helpful and it makes it more fun. I'm gonna just hold the base of my chair and I'm gonna lift that leg up and over for 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now on the other side we have a very large standard pool. Again, that's my visual, it just works for me. You use whatever you like. Up and over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Back, keeping that back nice and long. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and add an overhead movement. Come back to the center. Reach forward. Back to the center. Overhead. Back to center. Forward. And back to center. I'm going to add a side to side twist to this combination. Twist to the side. Come back to the center. Reach forward. Back to the center. Overhead. And back to the center. Twist to the opposite side. Back to center. Forward. And center. Overhead. And center. One more move. I bet you can guess what it is. Reach forward. Back to center. Overhead. Center. Reach for the floor, or as low as you can get. Back to the center, twist side, back to center, side, and back to center. Let's do that sequence together one more time. Reach forward, back to the center, overhead, back to center. Reach for the floor, back to center, reach side, back to center, and reach side, and then back to the center. For this next exercise, I'm going to do this one standing, but you may absolutely do this seated as well. So I'm peeling myself up off the chair with my feet about hip width apart, or actually a little bit wider for a nice stable base of support. I'm gonna do a big circle all the way up and around. Hinging down, keeping my back nice and long. Let's do four here. Four, three, two, and one, and then switch directions for the last four. Four, three, two, and one. Good. I'm gonna step myself back so I'm right in front of my chair. And you'll notice I have weights here. Be really careful that you have nothing on the floor around you. The last thing we need to do is create tripping hazards, so just be very, very careful about that. I'm gonna go ahead and have a seat in my chair. Now those are just a few exercises that I wanted to do with you today, just to kind of get you moving. You can add on as many as you like. I hope to be bringing more to you, but we're going to just keep it short for today. I want to do a few stretches to finish out our sequence. So, we're going to take one leg out in front of us, nice and straight. I'm going to sit up nice and tall. I'm going to breathe in. I'm going to take a nice big exhale and just tilt forward until I feel a stretch in the upper back of my leg. that foot back in. Then take the opposite leg forward. Sit up nice and tall, breathe in. Exhale forward. Feel that nice stretch in the back of the leg. And that forward. And that back. Take the fingers, lace them together, open up the back. Breathe in. On the exhale, let the head just lower. Let's take one wrist in one hand and just gently pull it across the chest. Don't force anything. And the same on the other side. Good, bring the hands back down. Now this is one of my favorite finishing sequences because it really relaxes you. So I have my legs apart nice and wide. I'm sitting toward the front of my chair. I'm gonna take a nice big inhale. On the exhale, I'm gonna come forward. Let my head lower. Slowly, gently round myself all the way back up. Inhale. Exhale forward. Gently lower your head. And round back up. One more time. Inhale. Exhale forward. Let the head lower. Gently and slowly round back up. Walk the feet in a little bit closer. Take the hands down to the side and roll those wrists around. Roll them in. Work the fingers a little bit. Play your imaginary keyboard. Give everything a little shake. And let's finish three big inhales up. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Exhale. Thank you for joining me today. We really hope to see you back at the Y soon.